So today I'm going to uh, speak a little bit about uh, how you can populate custom metadata on SharePoint Embedded using file or uh, on files using AI processing. My name is Mark Wendell. This is a continuation of the series we've been doing, um, kind of giving an overview of SharePoint Embedded. And today we're going to talk about that custom metadata. So just as an agenda, we're going to I'm going to kind of go through some slides, give you a little bit of theory, and then we'll look at uh, look at some code and get our hands dirty, and then uh, I've got a sample app running. Now, at a high level, what what we're going to do here is show you how you can define columns and custom properties on containers, how you can use webhooks to process container changes, how you can use Azure AI AI document processing to extract fields, and then how you can save that metadata to files on your containers. So before I get into those details, though, if you haven't come across SharePoint Embedded, um, it is the fastest way to bring the power of M365 storage and all those capabilities to your custom application. Uh, at a high level, it's an API-only headless version of SharePoint that you can build your custom applications on top of. It gives you a custom uh, dedicated partition in your in an M365 tenant, whether that's your own tenant or if you're making a multi-tenant application, uh, your app can, can manage containers within that tenant. Um, a whole bunch of capabilities come out of the box. Uh, here are some of them. I'm not going to go over them all, but it kind of spread across several areas, content AI, security, collaboration, and core storage. Today, I'm going to focus on some of the core storage capabilities and specifically uh, metadata. So how you can like set you know, define a schema on the files you're going to store in a particular container and how you can, you know, set those set those fields on on those files and how you can kind of use that data. Um, the short version too, like a container is really uh, the way to think about it is a, is a, almost like a document library in SharePoint. It's a place to put files. OK, so I just want to kind of some of the new capabilities that we've shipped in the last month, we're still in public preview with SharePoint Embedded, but we're constantly putting out new features. Um, and one of those is the ability to define a schema on a container and to be able to set uh, those fields for the files that are in that container. And so the way to do it, um, if you've ever worked with SharePoint, it's kind of similar, but if you haven't, no big deal. On the left side, you can see a Postman request, and I'll show you this in action later. You can define the columns on a container uh, using the slash columns endpoint. Really straightforward. So if you've got a container, you can uh, set some columns. There's a handful of column types that are supported, like text, Boolean, person or group, and so on. The full set is documented in our Postman collection and as well as in our, our documentation. So if you go to ak.ms slash sbe dash docs, you can, you can take a look at that there. Once you've defined columns and you start kind of uploading files, you can you can set uh, fields on those files. So fields are just like the values for those columns on a particular row or on a particular file in that container. Um, and that's really easy to do. Once you uh, you can use the slash list item dash slash fields endpoint on a file, and I'll show you that. Um, and you just provide a JSON object for the fields that you'd like to set. So really really straightforward for that. And then once you have, you know, your metadata set, you can do searching, uh, filtering, um, and use that use that metadata track state and kind of build your application. So that's that's metadata at a high level. Again, we'll see it in action in a sec. For webhooks now, I want to cover a little bit about webhooks. So um, just like for drives in Microsoft Graph, once you create a container with SharePoint Embedded, you can treat it as a drive in Microsoft Graph, and that includes the ability to set up webhooks or subscriptions with uh, notification and responders on that. So if you've ever used it for drives, awesome. If you haven't, it's really simple. Um, you can create uh, a subscription with the resource of that container. Um, and then when anything changes on that container, your, uh, your webhook responder will get notified. So your, your service in this example that I've got, as I'll show you, I have a, a Azure function that, that is the um, service that will get, get the webhook call when anything changes on my drive. And in, also in this example, what I'm doing there is 
I'm processing using Azure AI document processing to extract fields from receipts. So that's uh, this example, by the way, is is published in our documentation. So if you go to ak.ms slash SPE dash docs, you can go take a look at um, a handful of articles. And actually what I'll do is go into demos here. We can pull that up. Um, let's just, uh, I'll click on this actually. Looks like we're getting a link verification. Okay. So this is overview, but if we go into uh, concept or tutorials, I should say, there's uh, an article on how you can use metadata with SharePoint Embedded Containers, explains in detail everything that I just talked about here. Uh, there's an article for using webhooks and then also using document processing. So, and this all is all backed by a sample that's in our open source uh, sample app repository on GitHub. So I'm not gonna go into all of the details and how you get it set up, but I do have it running and for that, I just want to show you what that looks like. So um, this is the sample app. And right now I've got, uh, you know, a handful of containers in here and some files in there. I already have uh, a container here called receipt processing. And I just wanted to show you what that looks like. So when I select it, um, you can see I've got this toggle on my containers so I can enable or disable receipt processing. So this one, it was already enabled and it already processed some receipts, but I'll try to do a live demo and hopefully everything works um, where, where I'll create a new container and, and start processing some receipts. So, but basically these are just some of my personal receipts. Um, and then when you drop a file in here, an image or PDF or any other file type that's supported, it, it runs through that, you know, a webhook uh, get the webhook gets called and it will process the new items and use Azure AI document processing to extract fields and then set the metadata. So these are custom columns, uh, merchant total and whether or not it's processed. I do have some other ones in there as well. So I'm going to try creating a container. And hopefully that works. We'll see. All right. So this is a brand new container. I'm going to put some files in here and I have it enabled. I'll just put the same files. So just throwing some images in here. And I will also enable receipt processing on here. And that takes a second. I think my sample app UI is not the, not the best thing in the world, but there it is. And then I will go back this is just my way of refreshing. So you can see here that um, it added these columns to this container. And these files don't have anything set yet because it's happening in the background. And I've also enabled receipt processing. So this should be working in the background to, to set it. While that's happening, I'm going to go show you uh, some of the code that makes this happen. So um, this is the Azure function. Oh, you can see there's... Uh, console logging happening there. So things are happening in the background. Um, this is the Azure function. So this is the, actually the webhook responder. So on, on drive changed is how I respond to those, both the subscription requests, as well as how I get notified when something changes in my particular drive. And so uh, there, you have to respond with a validation token when you're setting up uh, a subscription. So that's what this code is doing. And then I also have the drive ID baked into my notification URL, just a convenient way to have a very specific subscription for my drive ID. And then all I'm doing here is calling the process drive and I do that asynchronously and respond back. And so process drive is just taking the drive ID and I can take a look at that. All of this, all this process drive method is doing is just getting all of the unprocessed, unprocessed items. So what I'm actually doing there is using metadata on the files themselves to track whether or not uh, they have been processed and I mark them when they've done that. So I'm using um, you know, a, metadata, a, a Boolean metadata attribute to know whether or not I've actually run through and done this Azure AI pro processing on it or not. And then I process each item and for that, um, without going into all of the code, the, the real heavy lifting happens by creating this um, Azure Doc Analysis Provider Client and then extracting the receipt fields and then saving that on that drive item. So I'll go into that uh, client now. We can take a look at that. The extract receipt fields, 
Um, if you're kind of watching from home here and you're concerned about how difficult it might be, it is actually really straightforward to use Azure AI services um, with with document processing to extract fields. And this is this is all the code that does it right here. So I in, instantiate a client um, using my credentials. So this is just a document analysis client. It comes it's it's an NPM library, um, and then. I call begin analyze document with this pre-built model that I'm using for receipts. You can obviously train your own or use a different model if you have a different use case. Um, and then I extract the results here. And here are the fields that are coming from it. And then I return those fields. So it's not complicated. Again, you can check the open source sample to look at it, but really straightforward uh, to extract, use, use Azure AI services to extract those results. Um, and then I unfortunately don't have a receipt button or a refresh button, but let's see if my receipts have processed. You can see, yeah. So here's the, the new column and you can see like, for example, here's the parking receipt. It's been processed. So this all ran in the background. It extracted these fields. I parked at the uh, airport, Port of Seattle, and you can see this is just what the image looks like here. So it's, it's you know, it's doing a good job of extracting all of that content uh, all of those metadata, and I'm able to now set it on my container, and I can do searching, uh, sorting, filtering, and other things, and obviously just tracking state in here in, in this custom metadata on a container. So that's it. That's it for my demo. Go check out uh, how you can use custom metadata and custom properties on containers uh, to be able to do this, and as well as some pretty cool stuff with Azure AI document processing.